Hey buddy, hey buddy. Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we are going to be going through what we've built in our application so far, doing some cleanup, especially around the header, because in the next section of videos, we're going to be doing something new, and we just wanna make sure that we kind of close off this section with some cleanup. The next application we're going to build is actually just going to be on another tab on the same website, so we're gonna have everything inside of the same page. But in order to do that properly, we want to make sure our header is set up nice and clean, which going off of some of the things we did in the previous video, it's okay, but there's actually some changes, some things I could have done better. So if you're just jumping into this video and you haven't watched the rest of the series, then a lot of this probably is not relevant. So you might just wanna start with the next video. But if you've been following along, definitely watch this video and make these changes. So let's first take a look at where we're at. Here is our site. There's nothing on the home page right now. We have the employee section, and then we have this customer's page as well, which currently just says, hello there. And this is what we were building in the previous video talking about the navigation. These links don't do anything and that's fine, just showing how to do it. But first off, this isn't actually correct. We don't want it to be in this blue color. And I think it's just because I incorrectly put it as part of the header. So we're going to fix that first so that every single page is going to start first thing right after the header with the appropriate amount of space. So that's what we're going to set up first. Additionally, we never took a look at mobile. So if you go into inspect, switch over to mobile, it looks pretty good, but still a little bit of short spacing here. And when you hit this, our links don't look the same as when we're not on mobile. You can see they don't have the underline and they have a little bit of highlighting. So we're going to apply those styles as well. So let's jump over to the header file and you'll see this is where we defined our styling before. We used a nav link and a class name. And the way this is gonna be set up is I'm sure dependent on what header you end up using or if you write your own. But in the case of this header that we took from Tailwind CSS's site, there's actually another section, if you scroll through here, with some more class names. And then scrolling even more, there's a, another section with some class names. So what are all of these things pointing to? Well, this first section up here is actually referring to the section that had an image of your user signed in, this profile dropdown, which we have since removed from the page, but I don't know if you guys remember, there was a little face here showing that someone may have been logged in, and you could click that, and then it would show some menu options. Since that's not showing up, this code isn't really hurting anything, and you know you might want to add that in later. However, we do have access to source control, so if we needed to go back and get this code, if we deleted it, we could easily do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything in this menu, and you can close it with this button here, and I'm going to delete it. So from line 85 to 152 in my case. Save, and now our site looks pretty much the same, but we really shortened our code and now we just have two sections with classes. So that section and then the one we created earlier for the main header links. So these are the header links on desktop and then these are the header links on mobile. So what I wanna do is I want to just copy this setup here. So we'll copy the nav link right there and we're going to paste this down here and use it as an example so we can switch this from a disclosure button to a nav link. So right inside of the loop, we'll paste that here. And then obviously do the necessary formatting. And we're going to have the key is item.name. And then we're also going to have the class name, but we're going to use the is active property to conditionally apply the classes. So let's go ahead and copy these classes and we will replace the ones we have here keeping the no underline because we want to add that one in. And the other two are exactly the same. So let's go ahead and remove this disclosure section. There we go. We will close the opening nav link tag here. And then we will take the closing one and place it after the item name. So there may have been a cleaner way of doing that, but that works. We'll also get rid of the disclosure button. Save. And now check it out. Let's go to mobile. Gonna hit this drop down and it looks right. Pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and fix this weird issue here where the page actually starts inside of the header. So let's go back to the header and this is actually going to do with props.children. So what we really need to do is we need to cut it and put it outside 
of this disclosure altogether. But then we're going to have some issues, so I'll show you how to fix that in a second. But first, you can find a little bit more information about disclosures from Headless UI. So it's a way you can conditionally open and close text. Here's basic example if you want to try it in your code. We're not gonna go through that right now, but that's what our code is using. So we just want it to be outside of that section. And then we can only really return one tag. So that's why we're going to surround all of this inside of a fragment. So we'll go up to the top, return, we'll open it, and then we'll take the closing one and put that down at the bottom. So right after props.children, Paste that there, save. Everything seems to have compiled nicely. We'll go back to our site and there we go. It's no longer embedded inside of the header. So sorry about that. That was kind of a mistake on my part. The next thing has to do with this padding right here. And you can see on the employees, it looks okay, but now we have this weird white bar. What is going on? So let's go remove the styling from this page and then add it to the header. So we will go over to employees and scrolling down here, this is another thing that I just didn't catch or didn't think of. We have this class name app because we copied this over from app.js. So this really shouldn't belong here. We will remove those. You can remove class name if you don't have anything to put there. But we're going to move over to header and place that code here. So let's surround this in a div class name. And then I'll put the closing div here as well. Now let's just go add in the class name. So we'll paste this. We don't need the app that doesn't belong here. That belongs in app.js. So we just want a background gray of 300 and a minimum height of the screen size. So going back to our application, it looks exactly the same, which is fine because really all we did is we just moved these classes from the inside component and moved it to the header. Now we can just remove that margin from employees, which is defined right here, margin Y2. We'll move that. That should move everything upwards. Now we can add that padding to the menu to control the spacing of whatever's inside. So we'll go over to the header and add a class here. We can say padding X2 and padding Y2. And you'll really be able to see this well inside of this customers page where the text is now spaced out really well. Whereas before it was touching the side here and touching the top here, really didn't look well. Now, any kind of pages we put inside of this header is going to have that padding and should look pretty nice. I think it looks best when it's zoomed in just a bit. You might need to adjust styling as sizes change. For example, this is kind of weird looking over here. So I imagine you could cap the width to this here and then everything would fit within that section and you wouldn't have things just forever expanding to fit the page. So if you inspect this area and let's just zoom out a little bit, we open the nav, we have a max width 7XL. So there's a good chance we could apply that to this section as well to restrict the sizing and then that might look a little bit more appropriately placed. Alternatively, you could remove that class as well, possibly. Let's just try it, see what it looks like. We'll go over here say max width 7xl save then we just add a margin x auto save that puts things in the center and then i think we can copy this same setup where we have the nav with an inside div and then the outer nav is what actually has the background color let's just try it so we'll go in here and surround this with another div. And this is the one that's going to contain the color. So we'll say class name is equal to background gray 300. Removing that from this one, which has a restricted max width here. So let's check that out. There we go. Looks a whole lot better. Now it's a little bit more predictable in size as we zoom in and out. And we don't have page widths that are like thousands of pixels. Perfect. Like I mentioned, this video is just a bunch of cleanup and, you know, reorganizing our code a little bit. Nothing major when it comes to React. This was mostly styling, but in the context of React, so, you know, it makes sense to have in this series. If you got lost or your site just doesn't quite look like the one here and you want to follow along exactly, well, in the next video, you can just pull the code at that exact 
moment in time, and that's the code you can build off of for the rest of the videos. So you might need to get some practice with Git for that, but I will show you the commit hash and the URL. So I'm going to commit both of these files, and I'll just say that the commit message is mobile styling. There, I sync the changes, and you can see that it's mobile styling. Here's the commit hash, and then you can find the URL right here. So if you visit this URL, you can git clone this URL, and then say git checkout, and then the first few characters of the commit hash. Alternatively, you can go to the history here, find the one you're interested in, and view the code, and that'll allow you to go in here and copy any of the code that you need if you weren't able to get it working correctly. Well, I think that is enough rambling for one episode, so stay tuned for the next episode for continued rambling. And if in case you're wondering what we're gonna be learning next, it's all about use effect, which is a very important part of React. And we're going to use this to eventually fetch data from an API and make more interactive applications. Thank you, I'll see you in the next one.